Hey guys, my name is Ali and I am a data analytics manager working in Oslo, Norway. In this series, I'm going to show you guys how you can build a data analyst portfolio from scratch. The series is going to consist of showing you guys how you can set up a practice environment. Now this practice environment is going to consist of SQL Server and Microsoft Power BI. After that, I will create an example business request which we need to plan around and which we need to use to be able to understand which tables do we need to find and which tables do we need to use in our reports. When we find those tables, then we have to clean them and we have to transform them so that they are ready for analysis purposes. Then we will take those tables, we will load them into Power BI, and in Power BI we are going to create some beautiful dashboards and reports. And at the end we have to take all of this work and we have to put it into a website so that you get an actual data analyst portfolio. My goal with this series is that by the end of the series you have gone through the different steps that you need to take to create a data analyst portfolio. You will also have a fully fledged practice environment where you can practice your SQL queries, you can use Power BI, connect to the source and create create different types of dashboards and reports and all of this knowledge and portfolio is something that you can take with you into your data analyst interviews. So that's enough talk, let's get into this video. Now in this video I'm going to focus on showing you guys how you can set up your practice environment. So I will show you guys where do you find the necessary files and how do we set this up and I will add all the links in the description. So the first thing we're going we're gonna to do is we need a SQL server and we're going to get the express version. So we will download that. Afterwards, we need some data, and AdventureWorks are some databases that Microsoft have created with some sample data, um, which is great to connect to the database and you can practice SQL queries, and we can use those for data visualization too. Um, so we're gonna get the, the data warehouse version, which means that the tables have been structured for analysis purposes, but we will also get this lightweight version, which shows what the data looks like when it gets stored from the transactional system. So if you think about it this way, this is before it gets restructured. This is after it's been restructured for analysis purposes. And it's nice to just see the differences just for learning purposes, but we will focus on using this the most for our transformations later in the series. Um, we need a visualization tool. And like I said, I'm gonna be focused on Power BI. Um, you can download it from the website, but I recommend that you download it from the app store because then it gets updated automatically as new versions come out. You don't need to download a version every single time a new one comes out. So I think it's great to download it and install it from the app store. And the last is a script that we are going to run to update some of the data in the databases that we are downloading from here. So let's start looking at the actual installation process. So the first thing we will do is we will inst install the SQL Server um, so that we can do that first. So I'm going to choose the basic one, um, accept, and I will keep the default, uh, the default settings here. So there you can see everything is installed. You can see the different, um, the different places, and uh, uh, you know it, it installed. Uh, it installed successfully, which is great. Now, what we've done now is we have installed a SQL Server instance, which means we now have a engine. Now we need something to manage that engine. So we're also going to install SQL Server Management Studio. So if you see here, you can click install SSMS, which stands for, like I said, SQL Server Management Studio, which is going to uh, manage the entire environment. That is where you're going to do your queries. And that is what we are going to use to connect the databases to the engine that we now have created. So let's do that too. Now, you need to you need to download this. Let's get that also downloaded. So we can we can close this one. Yes, and then I will install the management studio. Let's get that done too. There we go, and now we have that installed also. So now we have the, we have the management studio and we also have the, the, the instance installed. So let's open SQL Server Management Studio. So if you've never seen this before, basically, like I said, this is where you can connect the database. This is where you manage your entire instance and this is where we are going to do our SQL queries in the later parts of the series. So you can see right away, it's going to ask me to connect to a database engine and it will find a server name, which is the one that we had from before. I have other couple ones from work. So if I connect to that, you will see that now we are connected to the instance that we just installed. We installed a SQL Server Express instance and you can see under databases, we have nothing. But if you right click databases, you can see that we can restore some databases. Now the ones we're going to restore are the AdventureWorks databases that we installed previously. 
So now we need to figure out how do we restore these two databases. So I'm going to take those and I'm going to copy them. And let's see if I can figure out where I need to put those because it says um, we're going to put them in C program files, Microsoft SQL Server, and then uh, yeah, it's in the SQL Server instance name, SQL Backup. So let's try and navigate to that place. So it was C and then it was, I believe it was, what did it say? Program Files Microsoft. So Program Files Microsoft SQL Server and then Express, then Backup. Continue. And I will paste those two um, uh, uh, database files into the backup uh, into the backup folder so we can restore those. So when I now go into Microsoft SQL uh, the Management Studio and I right click on databases, I go to restore databases and then we will go to device. And from here we're gonna find those two files that we just moved. So you can see AdventureWorks DW2019 <clears throat> and then uh, the other one. So let's add that one first and then we'll add this one, we'll press OK, and then we'll press OK. So what's happened now is we have restored the two different databases. Actually, I only got one more, uh, one of them. Let's get the other one too. Device, and then we'll do add, LT, OK, and OK. So now we have both, great. So you can see now we have two different databases with, you know, we have different tables. We have some dimensional tables. We have some fact tables in one of the databases. Um, in the other one, we have some tables and fact tables, and you can see they look a little bit different. But the one we're going to use for the, the rest of the series is the, the DW2019. So if we now go into, let's say, dim customer, we can go select the top uh, thousand rows, and you will see that it will make a query, and you will get some data out. So this is something we can use now to practice SQL queries, and we can also structure some tables that we will later visualize and use in Power BI. The last thing I want to do is I want to update the data in the actual database. So um, I found a script online and we're going to run that query on the script and that should update some of the data because right now I know that some of the data is, I think the last time Microsoft updated the database was like 2014, but I want some fresh data. And I know that I should be able to use this script to do that. So let's just copy that script um, and then I will paste that in. Okay. And if we execute that, it's going to take a little bit of time. Then I will check the, the database, the, 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 the calendar table afterwards. So you can see it's affected a lot of different rows, which is good. Let's go um, select some rows on this one. Now I can see I have years in 2015, but let's do something else. Select distinct and let's do the year let's see what we get year. so you can see now that we have data all the way till 2020 and 2021 so now we have everything set up we have two databases connected to our SQL server instance we have management studio so that we can practice SQL queries if we want to do that we have updated the data don't forget to install Power BI for the visualization and reporting part, which comes later. But now we have everything set up for our practice environment so that we can actually move on and create our data analyst portfolio. So that is everything you had to set up and install to be able to follow this series. Now, if you had any issues or if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. Other than that, if you like this video, then give it a thumbs up. If you want to follow this series or you want to see more videos on data analysis, then subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys next week.